Hello and welcome to our online worship this week for Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. I'm Pastor Haley. Thanks so much for joining in our worship this week. We'll start with our call to worship, which is Psalm chapter 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I'm worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Let's pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together for online worship. God, tune our hearts into yours as we worship you today. We give you thanks in your holy name. Amen. And our Old Testament reading today is Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stay tuned for our children's moment. All right, friends, we are nearing the end. This is the end of the Fruit of the Spirit sermon series that we've been going through through the last eight weeks. This is week number nine. So we're taking one last look at our book together the Fruit of the Spirit, a little Daily Grace book. We'll start at the beginning. How about that? Let's see what it says at the very beginning. So here's a picture. And the illustrator for this book, her name is Katie Lindstrom. And the editor was Jana White. So they helped to put this book together. And here we have our um, lemon and blueberry. It says by Sarah Morrison. So she helped to write the story. So here's the beginning and what it says. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Because of the Holy Spirit, we are able to live in a way that is pleasing to God. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to produce good qualities that we can't produce on our own. In God, we bear His fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. That's from Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And a lot of that should have sounded really familiar after eight weeks of sermons on these. So the very first quality of the fruit of the Spirit listed is love. Love is the first one, and that's what we're talking about today. It's love. God is love, and God loves us. Because we know God's love, we love others too. God's love shows us how to love others. We serve others. We are kind to others. We are selfless in our actions. We are called to love one another and to love God too. So how can you show love to someone this week? In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, we have this passage of scripture. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not irritable and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So today's word 
is love. While we're here, let's go back and go through the other pages so to see what we can remember about the other qualities of the fruit of the Spirit. So in the list, first is love, and the next one is joy. Then what comes next? Do you remember? Peace. After peace is patience. Then it's kindness. Then we have goodness and faithfulness and gentleness. And one more, do you remember? Self-control. Then at the end of our book here, it has them all together, all nine of them. Peace, joy, love, goodness, gentleness, patience, self-control, kindness, and faithfulness. The end. But it's not the end because we are called to practice and cultivate all of those things in our lives as we grow in our relationship with God. So one more thing before we go today. Our Fruit of the Spirit card. The first one. There's all of them again. The very first one though. The one for today is love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it's not boastful, it's not arrogant, it's not rude, it's not proud, it's not self-seeking, it's not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love for each one of us. Help us to keep growing in your love and in your grace and help us to share your love with others. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And will you pause and pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for who you are, for the way that you are at work in our world and in us. God, we pray for those who are hungry today, for those who are thirsting after your righteousness. God, we pray for those who are in need. We pray for those who are in need of your love and of your grace, of your hope, of your light. Lord, we pray that you would help to meet their needs. Help us to be your hands and your feet, God. Help us to keep growing in your love and in your likeness. Help us to bear your image into our world. God, we continue to pray for your peace to rule and reign in our hearts and in our midst. God, we lift up those who are hurting today. We pray that you would help to give healing to them and give comfort where it is needed. We pray, Lord, that you would just provide for each person who's watching and or listening into worship today, that you would meet them where they are. God, we thank you for your love for us, that you love us just as we are, but you refuse to leave us that way, God. Thank you that you loved us so much that you came and you died on a cross for us. We thank you, God, and we can never say thank you enough for your love for us. God, help us just to soak up your love and to share your love with others today and every day of our lives. We'll also pause and lift up the things that are on our own hearts to you today, God, in this moment. Thank you, God, for how you love us. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stay tuned for our sermon on love. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Do you know anyone who's ever done that with the flower or have you done that yourself with the flower? With human beings, the answer might be he loves me. He loves me not. And that could be true. But with God, every time it is, he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. No matter how many petals there are on the flower you are using or how many flowers that are, there are ever on the earth, the answer every, every time is, He loves me. God loves 
you. God loves you, my friend. We are wrapping up our series on the fruit of the Spirit, and today we are talking about love. What a journey it has been as we have talked about these nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember what they are? In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we have the list um, from the New Living Translation is where I'll be reading today and as where I've been reading for the last um, eight weeks for the list here. Um, see what you can remember today. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Our weekly reminders, fruit is not achieved by working. Fruit is birthed by abiding, by abiding in Christ Jesus, as John 15 talks all about. So you can dig in deeper there. As Christians, we abide in Christ. All of the seeds of these nine characteristics are planted in us and they grow as we grow in our faith and as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's fitting that love is the first characteristic or quality of the fruit of the Spirit listed. It can be said that love encompasses all of the other eight characteristics. The eight following love may be describing what love in action looks like. Martin Luther wrote, it would have been enough to mention only the single fruit of love, for love embraces all the fruits of the Spirit. Love. What is love? Do you remember the um, Not at the Roxbury guys from Saturday Night Live and their foolishness? Yeah. Bobbing their heads till the What is Love song from Hathaway. We won't go there. But what is love? So love is unselfish concern for others. The Lexham Bible Dictionary gives us this definition of love. Love, a feeling of deep affection, a central theme in scripture and in Christian theology and ethics. It defines a relationship with God and dictates how we should treat others. The Greek language has multiple words that they use for love translated into our English word love. In English, we just have the one word, love, which I could say, I love ice cream, and I could say, I love my family, in two different sentences and have two kind of different meanings, but it's still the one word, love. In the Greek language, they have several words for love. It kind of helps broaden things out a bit. One Greek word for love is eros. This is romantic or a passionate kind of love. Then philio is another word for love, like the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. So philia, philio, is brotherly or sisterly kind of love. It's a love we have for those near and dear to us. And another word for love in the Greek language is agape, my favorite kind. Agape is a different kind of love. It's a godly kind of love. It's more of a decision than the spontaneity, the spontaneity of our hearts. It's as much a matter of the mind as it is the heart because agape love chooses to love the undeserving. Agape is the word for love used in Galatians 5, 22. Agape is love that is affection or benevolence. It's a dear love, a charity. It's the kind of love that God has for us, his children. The term agape can refer to kind of three different things. The first thing is God's love. In Romans 5, 8, Paul wrote, But God demonstrates his love for us, agape love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Agape can also represent a person's love for God. In Revelation 2, 4, John wrote, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Don't do that. Don't forsake your first love, which is God. God has always loved you and always will. Third kind of agape Part of agape love is love for one another. So God's love, a person's love for God, and the love for one another. In John 13, 34, John wrote, as Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. 
so you must love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another in John 15 and 9 through 12 so this whole passage about abiding in Christ Jesus says this here in John 15 as the father has loved me so have I loved you now remain in my love if you keep my commands you'll remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and have remained in his love I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete my command is this love each other as I have loved you greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends over in Romans 13 verse 8 through 10 Paul also wrote this to the church or to the people of Rome let no debt remain outstanding except the debt the continuing debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law the commandments you shall not commit adultery you shall not murder you shall not steal you shall not covet and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command love your neighbor as yourself love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law also over in first john 4 7 through 12 john wrote dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god everyone who loves has been born of god and knows god whoever does not love does not know god for god is love this is how god showed his love among us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Agape love, love one another, love God and love one another. Theologian William Barclay has said, Agape has to do with the mind. It's not simply an emotion which rises unbidden in our hearts. It's a principle by which we must deliberately live. Agape is a love that is above and beyond our natural affection. It goes above and beyond our loyalty to blood or family or friends. It is loving people who are not easy to love. It's loving people that we may not even like. That is agape love. We're called to love our enemies as well as our friends and family. We're called to love one another with God's love. In our day and time, the enemy has twisted love in a lot of ways. The enemy has attempted to twist love into something that God did not intend it to be. The same was true in Paul's day as Paul is writing to the church in Galatia here in Galatians 5, 22. Before this list of the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5, 22, Paul has listed works of the flesh and kind of compared and contrasted the two. So back in Galatians 5, verse 19, let's back up a bit to this list of the works of the flesh. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, wild parties, drunkenness, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have told you before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. The works of the flesh are twists on God's love. They are a violation or a perversion of the way that God intended love to be. They are perversions of God's great love for us. 
adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, and lustful pleasures are counterfeits of love among people. Idolatry and sorcery are counterfeits of love of God. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, and envy are opposites of love. Drunkenness and wild parties are sad attempts to fill the void that only God's love can fill. As St. Augustine said long ago, each one of us has a God-shaped hole or God-shaped void in our lives that only can be filled by God. All other things we attempt to fill this void with are counterfeits of God's love for us. These things that we try to fill our lives with might fill us for a bit, for a moment, but they're fleeting. The pain and the desires will eventually return. Only God can satisfy our deepest longings with God's perfect love that casts out fear and gives us peace. It causes us to feel safe and secure in the Father's loving arms. In the beginning, we were created by a perfect creator for relationship with this perfect creator, God. We are still created for relationship with God. God is love. Only God can satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts. Beloved, you are loved by the God of all love. You are loved more than you will ever know or be able to comprehend with your human understanding. God loves you. Whoever you are watching or listening today, God loves you. Christ has done the greatest labor of love of all by dying on the cross for our sins because he loved us that much. Even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 3.16 gives the agape perfect version of love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. As people who are dearly loved, loved so much that we were worth dying for by, by God himself, we are called to love God and to love people. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul has written what is known as the love chapter. This passage fleshes out what love should look like in our world. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully know, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, it's love. It's love. I remember being in youth group in high school or so, and my youth leader did a lesson on 1 Corinthians 13. And it stuck with me for all of these years, and perhaps it might stick with you today, too. 
take a look at 1 Corinthians 13 and in all the places where you see the word love, insert your name. How do you measure up? How do you measure up to God's version of love? Here's an example. Marley is patient. David is kind. Jeff does not envy. Sue does not boast. Dale is not proud. Mike does not dishonor others. Jane is not self-seeking. Hillary is not easily angered. Jack keeps no record of wrongs. Natalie does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Elizabeth always protects. Connie always trusts. Jacob always hopes. George always perseveres. Whatever your name is, insert it there where it says love. How are you doing on the love scale? You are loved. You are loved. Go and be love, beloved. Love changes things. God's love changes us from the inside out. Love changes people. It changes circumstances. Cultivate and grow love in your life and in our world. And as you do, the other characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit will be growing alongside the love too. Keep growing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Thank God. In Ephesians, Paul writes this beautiful prayer to the church of Ephesus, and it's one of my favorite pieces of scripture. And I want you to receive it today about God's love for you. In Ephesians 3, starting in verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family on earth derives its name, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is God's love, the love of Christ for you and to know that this love surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the full measure of the, all of the fullness of God. Now to him is a, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask for, think, or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And pray with me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. For loving us. Thank you for loving us even when we don't deserve it. God, help us to grow in your love for you and for your people. Help us to share your love with others, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining in our online worship this week. You're welcome to join us in person at 9 o'clock at Long Creek United Methodist or 1045 at Dalton City United Methodist. Next Sunday evening, September the 12th, we will be starting our Grief Share group at 6 o'clock at Long Creek United Methodist Church. You're welcome to join in with us. Send me a message for more information. Also, on Monday evening, September the 13th, is our charge conference with our district superintendent, Brad Watkins. We're meeting at Moequa United Methodist Church at 7 p.m. Let me know if you need more information about that. Thank you to everyone who has been helping to prepare for that charge conference. Thank you for working together and helping to get all of the meetings in and things in on time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace and remind you of his love. God bless you. Have a great week.